What's going on everyone? Welcome to the trailer breakdown for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, if you haven't already watched the CGI trailer that just dropped today, go over, make sure you do that, and then come right back here, because I am joined with Ashraf Ismail, creative director on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and Darby Hello. McDevitt, narrative director on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Gentlemen, thank Hello. you so much for joining us. Hi, it's thank a, you for having it's us. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs> so we're going to go through this trailer here. Uh, and sort of break down some parts, pause and play, um, and hopefully y'all could shed a little bit more light on some things for us. So why don't we go ahead and start it? They are heartless. So right off the bat, I do want to stop this here. Um, and uh, Ashraf, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the settlement we're seeing, because I know settlements play a big role in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yes, uh, here what we're seeing is uh, it's a settlement in Norway, a Norwegian settlement. Um, uh, the idea of home and settling, it's, uh, it's very important to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, a big part of the motivation of the, the story and the journey of Eivor, our hero, uh, is about this idea of home and having this thriving settlement. What we're seeing here, again, is uh, in Norway. Uh, this is home in Norway. Yeah, so let's keep going here. Because I don't think they're staying in Norway for long. <laughs> so, Darby, we see this giant statue here. Who Who is this exactly? This is a statue of Odin, um, uh, one of the many gods in the Norse pantheon. Um, it was pretty common before uh, big events, before battle, before feasts for um, the Norse to, to um, give offerings to the gods, sacrifices in exchange for favors. This was not a religion that uh, had, um, where there, there was like an interventionist aspect where the gods were always watching over you, protecting you. They were a little bit more like humans. You had to do something for them and they would do something for you. So this is what we're seeing here is kind of a, a pre, uh, something's about to happen and they're, they're sort of going and asking for favors. Godless barbarians. So we see there the, the first sort of shot of our, our hero, Eivor. Um, what, what's happening here? What, why are they getting their face covered? So here, uh, as Darby mentioned, we're, uh, we have a ritual because we're about to go out. We're about to go um, uh, to raid, to uh, attack. And so here we're getting sort of the favor of Odin. There's been uh, a sacrifice made to Odin um to gain the the this uh, uh war god's uh, uh favor and is there anything you can sort of tell us about eivor yeah eivor um so uh, our hero uh this is a viking raider who is from norway and who will be leaving norway for the the rolling green hills of of england um, here we're sort of teasing the idea that um, the journey really starts in Norway um, and it will eventually lead to England uh, where, uh, again, it's about this idea of settling the people and building this thriving settlement. Um, again, very important to the motivation of this character. Um, now, players will be able to play Eivor as male or female, um, but it is the, the, the journey of Eivor. So we see them here setting sail for England, right? Yes, absolutely. And kill blindly. So I want to I want to stop right there for a second too, because you know we hear the voiceover saying they, they murder and kill blindly, but then uh, you see them clearly stopping when they see you know the, this this woman and child in front of them. Uh, was was that something you wanted to you know? There's that maybe myth of the Vikings. Uh, is that something you wanted to explore here, uh, Darby? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, certainly, certainly, uh, a lot of what we know about the uh, the, the Vikings um, uh, comes from uh, the people who they raided. Um, the Viking Age started at the end of the eighth century um, with an attack on Lindisfarne in, in, in England, um, and the English like to write about it. And certainly, a lot of the accounts are very uh, brutal. Um, what we're trying to do is actually show the complete sort of story of an entire culture 
And when you actually jump forward to when our game is set, um, there's a lot of settling going on. There's not just raiding, but there's there's Norse coming over from Norway, from Denmark, um, and settling in England. Um, and our game depicts a lot of that that aspect of settling and integrating with the the population. So, and that that integration actually happened fairly quickly and easily. So we know that there is a there was a lot of mutual. Um, uh, um, so a lot of similarities between the two cultures that allowed this uh, to happen. So, so what we're going to portray in this game is that it's not just about brutality and and violence and and wanton um, and masochism. It, there's a lot of uh, thought that goes into uh, these raids, these battles, these and and then where these uh, Norse settle and the friends they make and the alliances they make. Um, so we try to com- to show a complete picture. Yeah, and you you reference the time period there. Uh, what exactly? What time period are we talking? So this game takes place. It, it this what the 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 main story takes uh, begins in eight seventy three um, A D, um, and uh, so at a time when uh, England is actually not one kingdom. It's not called England at the time, and except as a land, but it's not a country. There's actually quite a few kingdoms inside England. So. England itself is very fairly fractured at this time, with many different kings that uh, rule over different parts of it. Yeah, I think we might see one of those kings in just a second. They scar the lands of England, lands they will never defend. What we're showing here is that uh, they've left Norway and they've decided to now um, not just raid and attack England, but to actually uh, build a community there and as Darby mentioned, integrate themselves into the the local society and become a part of it. Um, uh, w- one thing that uh, history, uh, you know, doesn't really say when you until you dig, which is a lot of these people were farmers, they were traders, uh, settlers, um, and they actually worked quite hard to integrate themselves into, um, uh, let's say, England in this example. Uh, so here we're showing off. Uh, this aspect of them, but from a game perspective, this is also something that's uh, very important to the the motivation of the game, building your settlement, growing it, um, uh, making the choices as a leader within this community about how you want to grow your settlement. This is very important. Um, and here we're kind of giving a little taste of that. Yeah, one thing that uh, I think the 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 uh, the English, or let's say the Saxons, you'd call them at the time when they were living there, um, they had a lot of because of the church, they had a lot of writing, so they were able to leave behind a lot of records. But so we ar- archaeologically, we have to actually go and look at other uh, sources to see how well they actually integrated. And if you if you look at a map of England now and you see any town with the um, with the ending of Thorpe or By. Um, you know, B, um, that's probably means it was a, a, a Viking town or a Norse or Dane town settled. So we know just by the sheer number of them, hundreds of these towns, we know that they were actually very successful settlers. Never love. The time has come to speak. All right. So I think we, this is one of those kings that, that Darby you were mentioning. Uh, who exactly is this? Um, and you know, it, it's sort of revealed here that this is also the person that's giving voiceover as well. Um, why does he seem to have such disdain towards the Vikings? Yeah. So this is this is Alfred, King Alfred or Al, uh, Alfred the Great. He's the only uh, English title or English king to actually have that title. Um, he didn't give it to himself. Um, but he is the king of Wessex, which is the the southernmost kingdom in England at the time. The, there is also uh, three others: Mercia, Northumbria, and East Anglia that we deal with. Um, and he specifically is known for being one of the most uh, staunch uh, opponents of the Viking invasion. He was the strongest of the kings. He was able to push them back and 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 um, for a time and and deal with them, whereas other kings would rapidly crumble beneath uh, the 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 onslaught of the Danes and the Norse. To them, in a language, they will understand. Somebody, 
So, uh, Ash, here we see uh, Eivor's people coming in on these Viking longships. Uh, how do those factor into the gameplay, and you know, what did you learn about them? Yeah, so the Viking longships, uh, this is a technology that was unique to the, the Norse and the Danes and the Vikings in this time period. Um, if I was to give a metaphor, I would say, uh, imagine that you have this empty highway, rivers, uh, and you have a Ferrari that you can drive down this highway with no one around you and no one able to chase you. Um, this is what gave the Vikings the capacity to get in so deep into the land behind enemy lines uh, to hit and run. Uh, and the ships carried uh, usually cargo uh, and raiders. So raiders, these are warriors that were proficient in, in combat. They were able to get in, steal a lot of stuff and uh, run away. Yeah, I think we're going to see the uh, events of that play out here in a little bit. So we're, we're seeing here like a full on uh, battle taking place in this field. Um, how do raids sort of fit into to gameplay and, and what did you uh, and you know, what did you learn about how Vikings raid um, you know, once they once they've gotten out of their longships? Well, uh, there's really two parts. Uh, there's raiding, which is much more about kind of hit and run, get into a, a specific place, uh, steal the riches. Uh, create a bit of chaos to make people flee, run away, um, uh, uh, to give them time to steal. Uh, that's a raid. Here, what we're seeing is uh, it's, a, it's a big battle. So this time period wa uh, was known to have a lot of battles between the Vikings and the, the Saxons or the people who live in England. Uh, there were many battles. Uh, here, we're witnessing that. And that is something that we do have in the game. Um, so players can go raiding with their longship and their raiders. Um, and there are moments in the game with these really big epic scale battles uh, on battlefields or in fortifications um, uh, because it was a really uh, uh, a big part of the history during this time. So we needed to represent that. Of course, Vikings carrying their famous round shield. We have Eivor, who at some point is holding a shield and an axe, but also two axes. If people notice, we're seeing a lot of the uh, things we're doing with combat. Here we have uh, a throwing axe, which is an ability that you have in the game to throw axes. Uh, so we're showing off a lot of the, the combat details that we're pushing for. Yeah, and you know, we, we actually caught a little peek there uh, of uh, Eivor dual wielding axes here. Uh, is that something we're going to get to do? Oh, of course, absolutely. Um, so uh, dual wielding is a big part of the game, uh, and it's it's very open. You can pretty much dual wield uh, all combinations of weapons we have. If you want to dual wield two shields, we let you do that. Yes. Um, so so <laughs> so dual wielding is a is a big part of the combat system. So we get like a little tease here. There's some hooded figure that, that appears to be standing next to this tree on the battlefield. Anything at all, uh, Ash, you could tell us about this figure here. Here, Eivor believes that he is receiving some kind of favor and uh, it gives him the sort of, let's say, the will to push forward. Odin is with us! So is that the sort of physical manifestation of Odin there? Well, uh, in the in the uh, myths, um, Odin has two uh, ravens, Hugin and Munin, which are a thought and memory. Um, uh, they come from the words thought and memory, and they were just his two companions that would help him gather knowledge and wisdom about the world. So uh, we see Ivor here getting just about, you know, all they can handle. Uh, is this? Are we gonna see enemies of this stature, you know, that are this formidable in the game? 
Yeah, we have. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the combat of this time period, if you're going to make a Viking game, uh, the combat needs to be visceral. It needs to be uh, quite brutal. Um, so, uh, yes, you meet uh, quite impressive enemies, um, like this guy here. We would call this guy the ringleader. Um, so this is sort of a, a leader on the battlefield who's able to rally the troops um, uh, and have some kind of unique capacities. Uh, he's very armored, um, very few uh, available weak points. Uh, so that's a little hint as to what's to come. Yeah, I mean, the trailer shows that, you know, he's, he's given Ivor basically everything they can handle. Okay, so <laughs> this is the coolest nice thing in the world. Uh, I, there's so much I want to talk about. Um, first of all, the Hidden Blade. Uh, the Hidden Blade is back. Uh, what was the decision around that? And then it's also mounted on top of the arm for the first time. Um, where, where did all those decisions come from? <laughs> you go first. Uh, let's see here. I'll go first. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're building a, a Viking fantasy. We wanted our players to live uh, in the boots of a Viking warrior um, and to fully live in that fantasy. But this is within the Assassin's Creed world. Um, and so uh, in our journey, um, of course, uh, we're not, we, we can't spoil too much here. Um, but in our journey, uh, Eivor does meet with, um, with assassins. Now, Eivor doesn't necessarily know what that means, um, but there is uh, some kind of common ground that they have, and this is something that Eivor, these are people that Eivor will work with. Um, uh, and at some point, Eivor does receive a hidden blade. Um, so that's something that happens in the journey quite early on. Uh, again, we, we don't want to get into any spoiler territory or explain why the connection is there, um, but it is something that's very significant and important to the journey of this game. Um, and so when Eivor receives this hidden blade, Eivor puts it on um, and believes that this is such a kick-ass weapon that why would you want to hide it from your enemies? So here again, it's it's we wanted to show that Eivor, there's there's something more to this character than uh, yes, this is a Viking raider, um, but there is more. There is something unique here. There's a unique journey that our players will will go on uh, with within this Viking fantasy inside the Assassin's Creed world. Yeah, we spent a lot of time um, overlapping and intertwining threads to make sure that every moment of it really feels connected, integrated. Uh, um, that it's all, you know, w when you play this game, you're in the, not just a Viking game, but an, an Assassin's Creed game. All right. Well, folks, there you have it. That's the first trailer for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, you got the in-depth breakdown. You got all the details with Ashraf, the creative director, Darby, the narrative director, Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, and Ash, when and where can people play Assassin's Creed Valhalla? So uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will be a launch title for uh, Xbox Series X and PS5. And it'll be out in holiday uh, 2020 for Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Stadia. Awesome. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Thank and you. If you liked this, please subscribe to this channel and visit us at news.ubisoft.com.